Welcome, in the name of the God who gathers us, who grafts us onto the tree of life, and who grows our faith daily. Long ago, a prophet foretold that from a stump a new sapling would grow. That sapling was Jesus. And though Jesus would stretch up to heaven, he remembered his roots. He called Mary and Joseph his mom and dad, and they told him about his family tree from Abraham to Zechariah. But that was only half the story. Long ago, a savior died on the cross for us. The dead tree of the cross put out a new shoot, and from that shoot a wild bush grows, full of prickly saints and florid sinners, all part of Jesus' family tree. And its name is Church. In the tangled branches of its stories, we learn, from generation to generation, God brings new life from what was dead. God surprises people who thought they were prepared. God acts according to long-expected promises and also, somehow, right out of the blue. Come, divine wonder, astonish us again. Let us pray. God, as we wait for you, you place the stories of Abraham and Sarah, Rahab and Ruth, Mary and Joseph, and innumerable saints into our midst. You formed these people into a family. As we light our Advent candles, let each flame illuminate the beautiful tangle of saplings that grow from Christ, our root, and let us recognize ourselves among them. Amen. O come, O come, Emmanuel, and ransom captive Israel that mourns in lonely exile here till the sun of God appears Rejoice, rejoice Emmanuel 
shall come to you, O Israel. God of darkness and flame, you are mystery and revelation. Out of the deepening blue, come to us. In both questions and answers, in both doubt and faith, in both comfort and conviction. Abide with us in the stillness of unknowing. Smile with us at sudden realizations. Open our hearts to perceive your presence in this moment. Where we are, however we are, whether or not we are ready. Amen. A reading from Ruth. In the days when the judges ruled, there was a famine in the land, and a certain man of Bethlehem and Judah went to live in the country of Moab, he and his wife and two sons. The name of the man was Elimelech, and the name of his wife Naomi, and the names of his two sons were Malon and Chilion. They were Ephrathites from Bethlehem and Judah. They went into the country of Moab and remained there. But Elimelech, the husband of Naomi, died, and she was left with her two sons. These took Moabite wives. The name of one was Orpah, the name of the other, Ruth. When they had lived there for about ten years, both Malon and Chilion also died, so that the woman was left without her two sons or her husband. Then she started to return with her daughters-in-law from the country of Moab, for she had heard in the country of Moab that the Lord had had consideration for his people and given them food. So she set out from the place where she had been living, she and her two daughters-in-law, and they went on their way to go back to the land of Judah. But Naomi said to her daughters-in-law, Go back, each of you, to your mother's house. May the Lord deal kindly with you, as you have dealt with the dead and with me. The Lord grant that you may find security, each of you in the house of your husband. Then she kissed them, and they wept aloud. They said to her, No, we will return with you to your people. But Naomi said, Turn back, my daughters, will you go why will you go with me? Do I still have sons in my womb that they may become your husbands? Turn back, my daughters, go your way, for I am too old to have a husband. Even if I thought there was hope for me, even if I should have a husband tonight and bear sons, would you then wait until they are grown? Would you then refrain from marrying? No, my daughters, it has been far more bitter for me than for you because the hand of the Lord has turned against me. Then they wept aloud again. Orpah kissed her mother-in-law, but Ruth clung to her. So she said, See, your sister-in-law has gone back to her people and to her gods. Return after your sister-in-law. But Ruth said, Do not press me to leave you or to turn back from following you. Where you go, I will go. Where you lodge, I will lodge. Your people shall be my people and your God, my God. Where you die, I will die. There will I be buried. May the Lord do thus and so to me, and more as well, if even death parts me from you. When Naomi saw that she was determined to go with her, she said no more to her. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Tonight's reflection comes from Barn Geese Worship's Out of the Blue Midweek Worship and was written by Victoria Larson. Imagine them, Ruth and Naomi, trudging along the road to Bethlehem. Centuries later, their descendant Joseph would follow the same road with his wife, Mary. But while Mary and Joseph traveled in joyful expectation of new life and prophecies fulfilled, Naomi and Ruth, they traveled under the burden of grief. Naomi had lost her husband and sons. Ruth had lost her husband and homeland, leaving behind her parents and traveling with her mother-in-law to a place she'd never seen, with little hope for her future. What God will do for the both of them is just around the corner. Ruth will meet Boaz, Naomi's kinsman. He will see the virtue of these vulnerable women and choose to honor his legal obligations to them. Honoring legal obligations might not sound like a terribly romantic plot line for this love story, 
but it's positively swoon-worthy in this context. Boaz is the many times great-grandson of Judah and Tamar. When Judah failed to do for Tamar, his descendant will do in spades for a refugee widow from a foreign land. Ruth's persistence and loyalty to her loved ones win justice and a future for her family. On November 26th, circa 1797, a woman whose persistence and loyalty to her loved ones would reshape American justice was born in upstate New York. Sojourner Truth was enslaved at her birth, but in 1826, she took her infant daughter and walked her way into freedom. She had to leave her other children behind when she escaped. She later learned that her former enslaver sold Peter, her five-year-old son, who was then illegally resold to an enslaver in Alabama. With slavery newly illegal in New York, Truth filed a lawsuit to reclaim her son. She took it all the way to the Supreme Court, becoming one of the first black women to win a legal case against a white man. Sojourner Truth wasn't born with that name. She chose it on Pentecost Sunday of 1843 because out of the blue, she heard the Holy Spirit calling her to preach the truth. She told her friends, the Spirit calls me and I must go. Like Ruth, she dropped everything and went. She spent the rest of her life traveling and preaching about the abolition of slavery and about women's rights. Sojourner Truth's legacy continues to reshape American conversations around civil rights. Consider June 27, 2016, when Bree Newsom drew the world's attention by climbing a flagpole at the South Carolina State House and taking down the Confederate flag. Newsom was spurred into action by the Charleston massacre just two weeks earlier when a white gunman walked into a manual African Methodist Episcopal Church in Charleston and murdered nine people at Bible study. Bree later reflected, I realized that now is the time for true courage. The morning after the Charleston massacre shook me to the core of my being. I couldn't sleep. I sat awake in the dead of night. All the ghosts of the past seemed to be rising. Bree's act of civil disobedience was rooted in her Christian faith, the faith she shared with the Emanuel Nine. As police officers ordered her to come down the, from the State House flagpole, she said, In the name of Jesus, this flag has to come down. You come against me with hatred and oppression and violence. I come against you in the name of God. This flag comes down today. Bree succeeded. Although the Confederate flag was hoisted again 45 minutes later, the flag came down for good two weeks later after international outcry and a vote in the South Carolina House of Representatives. Each of these three women faced moments of decision, moments when they could have chosen an easy path or the difficult one that God beckoned from. They took those steps onto the more difficult path to keep the ghosts of the past from rising supported by love, by faith, and by a vision of justice, not just for themselves, but for all those whom it was in their power to help. As the music plays, you are invited to offer your response to the questions in the comments or to consider your responses in silence as you listen to the music playing. As she was led away by police, Bree Newsom recited some words from the Psalms, what verse from scripture calls you and empowers you to answer God's call? Ruth followed Naomi. Sojourner fought for Peter. Bree remembered the Emmanuel 9. For whom would you go to the ends of the earth?
The Spirit weaves our community together like branches into a circle of care, and now calls us to bring to mind the things we carry tonight. You are invited to name specific prayer concerns or prayer requests in the comments. Beloved, we offer our prayers to God. We pray for the healing and flourishing of creation. Every mountain will sing and every tree will clap its hands. We pray that our leaders would work toward justice and mercy. They will be called oaks of righteousness. We pray that the poor may find refuge and food, safety and care. They will be like trees planted beside streams of water. We pray that the sick may be made well. They will bear fruit in due season. We pray for the tangled thicket of the church, for all its saints past and present. Their leaves will be for the healing of the nations. O Christ, you are the tree of life. All our joys grow from your roots. In your shade we leave all our cares. Hear our prayers tonight and always. Amen. Let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. My soul proclaims your greatness, Lord, I sing my Savior's praise. You looked upon my lowliness, and I am full of grace. Now every land and every age this blessing shall proclaim. Great wonders you have done for me, and holy is your name. Beloved friends, you are saplings growing from the tree of life. May the deep-rooted love of God anchor you. May the strength-giving grace of Christ grow you, and may the bow-shaking breath of the Spirit stir you. Amen. <laughs>